Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Sunday. Let's go to the Sierra. First stop is going to be Mammoth, where the snow level has come down to about 7,500 feet. Remember, it started very high at about 9,800. Well, it's down now, and it is snowing and it is blowing. Look at the, uh, the main lodge. Good coverage now. Look at that snow coming down. Being blown by very strong winds. Main lodge here, 8,900, looking good. Um... Yeah, so this is going to continue. I mean, we're going to get several more inches of accumulation. In fact, let me show you the uh, the radar um, across the west, and then I'll zoom into this area. But there's our area of low pressure, nailing the high Sierra. There's just a little bit of interior precip. This is all just sort of out ahead of that area of low pressure. It will continue to build because what's going to happen is later today this low is going to start to eject out and make its move and then that will increase the snow across nevada utah arizona colorado eventually and new mexico wyoming all those areas will see increasing chances for snow over the next 24 hours look at this this is intense uh, and you can see the spin around this area of low pressure heavy snow over whitney and there's mammoth of course and then all the way up to tahoe Above 7,500, we've got heavy snow, so we're just getting nailed. The bulk of the snow will come down today, and there may be some residual snow tomorrow, but this is today is really the prime time for a lot of the heaviest accumulations across the area. All right, here's my uh, bullet points. No, actually, you know what? Let's go to uh, water vapor, uh, continue to look at the big picture. So there's our spin. There's our area of low pressure. You can already see the next wave kind of coming in behind it. But what will happen is, again, this will move out and kind of head towards the four corners today. And that's what will increase the snow across a lot of the interior. All right, uh, bullet points. So here's what I'm looking at. So there's our snow of 7,500 today. It may actually fall on the tail end of this storm to 7,000 overnight into tomorrow morning in the Sierra. Um, then it moves into the interior. That's going to start to happen a little bit later today. There's another storm for 11, 18, 19, and 11, 20, and 21. Now, the trend with all of these is to kind of bring them in through California and then to the south. So more of southern track type storm systems. Here are the best odds of snow for uh, Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So for example, in Utah, you've got moderate, in some cases, potentially heavy snow accumulations afternoon today, tonight, into the morning of tomorrow. Um, and the numbers are looking a little bit better than they were yesterday. So that's good. Light accumulations on 19 and then moderate to heavy on 25. In Colorado, moderate accumulations, in some cases light, but overall moderate. Um, this afternoon, tonight, through tomorrow. Light on 18 in the afternoon, late. And then 1119 light to moderate, moderate 1120, light on 1121. So that's how you read that. I won't go through all those. Um, but here is the forecast radar. So let's play this out in time. So we'll start this up at lunchtime today, Sunday, November 16th. You can obviously see the big storm. And look what has happened by this point. There's the, the initial wave. That's moderate to heavy precip right there. That's hitting the Wasatch, the High Uintas, and just moving into western Colorado as well. Your main storm system is still back here, but it's starting to move out. And that's the key. All right, let's move ahead. So the dinner hour, you've got a lot more precip across Colorado, especially the western slope. You've got precip snow hitting the Tetons, the Wind Rivers. You've still got snow in Utah over the high mountains. Um, okay, here we are. So this is 5 a.m. on Monday. November 17th, you've got some snow in Colorado, Utah, Wyoming. Next wave already moving in behind the first one across the West Coast. There's lunch hour Monday. There's the dinner hour on uh, Monday. And now let's move into, there's 5 a.m. on Tuesday. So look at this, low pressure coming in behind the first one. So this is Tuesday, November 18th, early in the morning. There's the next storm system. And notice a lot of snow there and heavy precip parts of southern Utah into uh, Arizona. Snowball's going to get nailed. So will Brian Head. They're both going to get nailed. But um, So here we are, lunch hour on Tuesday. Some of the snow has made it up into the Wasatch, the high windows, and we'll see some increasing snow across the western and southwest aspects of Colorado and the mountains. 
So there's a dinner hour. Um, there's uh, 5 a.m. on Wednesday, November 19th. And again, there's your snow. Snow to the north. So pretty active pattern. I mean, we're, we're talking two or three different storm systems here in the forecast. A quick look at the time height forecast, a cross section. You're looking through uh, the vertical uh, atmosphere here, essentially. So there's your jet stream level. There's the top of the 13ers and the 14ers right there. But this is for Loveland Ski Area. So uh, today starts right here. You move in this direction into the future. So initially it's very dry with uh, west southwesterly winds. Very dry. And then you can see the moisture in green here come in late today, tonight, and throughout the day on the 17th. So you see all this green up here at the top of the high peaks and the ridge lines. So that's your moisture, that's your snow chance all the way from late tonight into tomorrow. Um, and you can see these solid black lines. See how the, the surface increases on these isentropic surfaces? Um, that's your increase in your moisture. And that's what we need, that lifting. That lifting of that surface. 318, uh, if you see that number. I had a question about this come up. Um, the 318 is often referred to as sort of your conveyor belt your moisture conveyor belt surface. Well, anyway, then it dries out after this, and then there's another little wave that comes in. It looks like late eight, late 18 into 19. So we've got these waves. And again, this will be accumulating snow that comes in tonight into tomorrow. All right, let's look at the atmospheric uh, pressure anomalies. So this is Monday, 11-17. There's the first low, second low, deep low coming out of the northeast. Um, this is the 20th, so the next low behind it, moving in, another low behind that. Big high pressure, higher than normal pressures out here over the Great Lakes in the Midwest. So this is a pretty active pattern right here, but look how far south this, low air, this area of low pressure digs. That may be south enough to draw in some cooler air, enough cooler air, potentially if this low sets up around Albuquerque, that that potentially could, let me draw the low, that could force a northeast wind into the Denver metro area. So that might actually generate some snow with a northeast wind over Denver late this upcoming week. Late. That might actually be the first decent chance of snow for the Denver metro area. We'll see. All right, here's Saturday, 1122. Look at that, that next low, how far south it goes, all the way into Mexico at that point. That's pretty interesting. Um, okay, let's look at total precipitation. This is as if everything fell as rain. Now this is seven days. So this takes us all the way from today into next weekend. Anywhere you see the yellows, anywhere you see the yellows, that's an inch or more of liquid. That's generally going to be your foot of snow or more. That translates to roughly a foot of snow or more. So I always like to look for the yellows and kind of see where the yellows. The red's even heavier. I mean, the red is, you know, you're two to three inches at that point. So that's total liquid. And there's a good generous across, good generous, um, uh, basically just layering across all of the high mountains with that. All right, let's look at snowfall. Ten to one ratio. So the deep purple is at least six inches. The bright pink is a foot and there's a lot of bright pink over the mountains. Wyoming, Utah, Idaho, Montana, California, uh, Colorado, the Pacific Northwest, BC. Anywhere you see the white pop out over some of the places in the Sierra, that's two feet. Up here over Rainier, I can see it. Maybe in Southwest Colorado, up here into the coastal range of BC. So you can kind of see the coverage, the animated coverage. Let's, let's shift the view to the Southwest part of the country. And there's your heavy snow over to the Sierra. Look at Southwest Colorado, um, Arizona Snow Bowl, Brian Head, looking at maybe one to two feet there. Again, that's seven days out. Here's my official forecast. And this is grand total snow through the 23rd. So what do we have left in the Sierra with this storm? Well, potentially up to another foot. And then things are going to settle down. Uh, I've got two feet for Brian Head, over two feet for Snowball. Seven to 14 
in the Wasatch with the higher end amounts in Little and Big Cottonwood Canyon, no surprise. In Colorado, the biggest numbers are across the western slope, certainly the southwest mountains, the San Juans. Um, I've got Wolf Creek at 18, Silverton at 18, a foot for Purgatory Telluride, less in Monarch, less Breck, less Summit County. Uh, a bit more over the Front Range High Peaks because we could see that low setup with some snow for potentially Denver in the Front Range that would drive some snow up on the Continental Divide. Uh, Aspen about 10, Snowmass, and this is up at the ski area. Aspen ski area 10, 12 up at Snowmass at the ski area. Uh, a foot, um, and there's quite a bit that comes in late in the period, but about a foot up there in Jackson Hole, the ski area in Grand Targhee. About a foot, Schweitzer, Brundage. Some decent numbers up here in Interior BC. I'm not really sure where the rain snow line is going to be, but that may be an issue. But certainly a foot up there through Revelstoke, Red Mountain. Uh, about a foot up here in the Pacific Northwest, but more if you go really high up over the very highest cascades in the volcanoes. About 10 at Alieska. All right, let's look at the Northeast. Rolling accumulation. Um... You can see the numbers in the deep purple, that's at least six inches. So we've got some pockets of at least six. I can see that a little bit of lake effect. So how does that actually play out as far as snow? Well, here are my numbers. Through the 23rd, you got a couple of tens up here of a Tremblant and JP. Eight, Stowe, and then six is Sugarbush, Mad River, and then the numbers go down pretty dramatically here because it's just so much warmer over southern Vermont, southern New Hampshire. Uh, 8 over Washington, 4, 5, 6, 7 at Snow Ridge, about 8 up there at Whiteface. Rain snow line is going to be an issue at times. Um, okay, one more map. I forgot to show you this. This is the zoomed-in map for Colorado. Um, basically, I just sh showed you that western view, um, which was this. So this is just a zoomed-in view, essentially, of this. And you can see where the biggest numbers are, western, southwest Colorado, and again, you might have a little bit more up here on the Front Range High Peaks because we might have that load that sets up and drives some of that upslope flow. Uh, and then you have a little bit less. This is the lull zone. This is typically what happens with a setup like this. Um, you'll have snow to the west of that and then to the east of that, but you'll get less in Summit County, uh, kind of backing up to uh, Vale and Copper. But looking pretty good. Again, that's through the 23rd. I mean, this is really good considering we're at in Colorado, one of the lowest snowpacks for this time of the year on record. So we need, we need this desperately, and we need colder air. Everybody needs colder air right now. Just a quick look at uh, some of these 10 to 15 day. These are ensembles, and so these tend to kind of filter out um, a lot of the anomalies. But this is forecasting an ensemble mean of 8, 9, 10 inches by December 1st. That is definitely possible on Mount Washington. It's probably going to happen well before that. Uh, but you get an idea. There's Jay Peak. Again, we're going to get to 10 well before that. Uh, Jackson, Wyoming. Again, there's a big acceleration of the numbers late into the period. So it's late in that period that things that the colder air will come in and really help the snow generation. There's Berthoud Pass. Things really improving late in the period. And, you know, when I mentioned Denver, there's a little bit of snow in the forecast there late week 2021 20, and 22 that might be the first snow for denver we'll see uh, there's a lot riding on the position of that area of low pressure because at this time of the year when you don't have a whole lot of cold air the position is everything all right guys thanks for tuning in here always appreciate it take care and have a great day